contract talks set to resume tomorrow between the province and the union in a bid to avert a strike by 55,000 school workers across the province on Monday. Joining me now with reaction on that, Education Minister Stephen Lecce. Thank you for joining me this morning. Yeah, good morning. You just heard she's confident that a deal can be reached. How confident are you? You know, I think it is very plausible. I mean, the, the mission of this government is to get a deal. You know, last Sunday, just to provide context for families at home, we were so close. And I think what's somewhat perplexing for some of us is what could have transpired between Monday when QP announced in their judgment to do a partial withdrawal of service and Wednesday when they ramped up to a full out strike. I can't answer that question. What I can tell you is that we remain very close. There's really fundamentally the mission for the government is to get a deal. We wanted to do this last Sunday. Mm -hmm. We stand ready 24 seven. I'm pleased that QP has agreed to accept our offer to meet. We're doing it tomorrow at fi Friday at 430. And I want parents to know I want to keep kids in the classroom of the province of Ontario. Let's talk about that because there are some school boards who have already said it might yeah. mean us closing our doors because we don't have the staffing in order to do it. When people hear support staff, they don't hear teachers. They don't realize this is early childhood educators. So yes. something like full day kindergarten would be one of the big ones affected. It is still possible, though. So how hard are you going to be working to make this deal happen? Because hearing from Laura Walton here with QB, she says you are far apart when it comes to sick days and absenteeism. Yeah, I mean, I think the I wouldn't suggest that is the singular impediment here. I think the government has demonstrated very a, a strength of reasonableness. I think we've been a force at the table that wants to get a deal. I think for many families at home, they don't care about the back and forth. They just care about the outcome, which is making sure that a child is in the classroom and on Monday. And that is my expectation. And that is my Hope. And I think what we've demonstrated is that I've even expanded my negotiating mandate a bit to give them a bit more latitude to get a deal last weekend. Now, this is where we're at. We've, uh, we have reached uh, agreements on a lot of the critical issues. That's progress. Where there is outstanding is on absenteeism. For many people out there, they'll know the revolving door of staff coming through our schools, we don't have permanency. We don't have uh, the same uh, workers in the front of classrooms helping our children is a problem. When, we have, when we're spending only $35 million a day on sick days, instead of reinvesting those dollars on absenteeism, instead of investing those dollars on frontline investments, I think a lot of parents are sort of thinking, why is that the priority? Why aren't we putting more money in the front line? So we're fighting to make sure that those dollars get to, work, to help your child, new textbooks, new infrastructure, uh, better technology in the class. And that's where the, the government's priority is. It's on helping kids get ahead. And the dollar figure that you mentioned there and the argument coming from the other side is that when we look at that average uh, rate when it comes to absenteeism, because there are sick days there, but some of the workers that we're looking at are uh, EAs who are dealing with students who might be potentially physically violent, where they have yeah. to take the mental health days off because these are very tough, trying jobs For at sure. the front line with the future, our future with these students. So is it fair in saying these sick days, you know, just categorizing them and putting them in one silo yeah. saying sick days are sick days when some of these workers are really dealing with some tough things? Look, there's no doubt that people right across sectors of the economy work hard and they deal with adversity in their workplace. No, that's no different for EAs. I know they work hard. The issue is not about them. It is about the, the regime that surrounds sick days that, get, that get, provides 130 days of pay, 11 of which are 100%, 120 of which are at 90%. So I don't want to give people at home the uh, thought that this is what's hindering a deal. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, we could have had a deal last Sunday. I mean, we stood ready to negotiate every single day without exception, including yesterday and today. I mean, it, it took the union, I'm, and to be fair, I'm quite pleased that they've accepted our offer, but it took them a few days to get there. What transpired to move to get to this point? We shouldn't even be in this position where we're talking about a general strike when we ought to have been back at the table. I feel like all of us, you know, we expended so much energy in the public domain instead of doing it at the table. And I think for parents at home, I want them to know that the government is going to be absolutely razor focused on fighting for their kids and making sure more money is flowing in the front of the classroom to help their child get ahead and to provide stability by keeping them in the class this Monday and beyond. Okay, so we'll be watching the negotiations tomorrow and through the weekend. Yep. Now there's more. We still have to look at the elementary teachers who yes. are looking at strike votes here, uh, what they could potentially do for job action, Ontario OSSTF, we're looking mm -hmm. at the secondary level. Where does all of that stand? Because there are a lot of parents and students watching at home saying, hey, listen, I'm on the same page. I just want my child to be learning and to right. be in a safe environment. That's it. And I think that's the bottom line for the government, too. We certainly agree. Uh, I think with right across the board, we we know the uh, with QP, that process commenced perhaps a bit earlier. We're a bit further mm -hmm. along than some, with some of the other teacher unions. QP is dealing with education workers. The other teacher unions are dealing with teachers. 
But having said that, there, it's, we're happening. We're having very positive discussions. I would say constructive, uh, in good faith, at the table. I want to respect that process, but I want to want to make sure parents understand for the government. We are trying right across the board to provide an element of sort of peace within the sector. I want to remain a constructive force that families know that we're going to do whatever it takes to ensure children are in the class in September, uh, pardon me, in, on Monday, and really throughout this entire year. And that applies for teachers who work hard. I want them to know that we've got a reasonable deal on the table that provides predictability, that ultimately allows children to be doing what they do best, which is learning and nurturing in a modern learning environment. And that's the mission for the government. We're not going to be deterred from that, notwithstanding the noise we hear from federal or provincial politicians. Yes. Uh, I think we need less politics at this point and to focus more so on our kids. Where do things stand with the elementary teachers? I would submit the same sort of summary uh, with, uh, with secondary teachers. I mean, as you know, in the elementary panel, we made fundamentally no changes to that from junior kindergarten to grade three in that area where there's, there's quite strong evidence of keeping classrooms small, which is why we made no change at all. I mean, we, we believe in ensuring uh, there's a positive learning environment early years that we've had such success there. You know, I'm approving new schools. In every new school I'm building, the province of Ontario, the, the province is building, we're adding new child care spaces. We're really trying to invest in early learning because that in educational intervention early is really leading to a better cognitive development and ultimately but more stronger, capable people in the workforce, which is what we, we seek to build in this province. Okay. A lot of work to do here, Minister, and we hope that it is all positive. We will be watching negotiations again tomorrow with CUPE, tomorrow through the weekend, and then what's next with EDFO and OSSTF. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank I appreciate you. your appreciate time today. That.